Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series. This is part three of effects setup for surround mixing. This time we're gonna talk about some delay setups. So we'll talk about a mono in, mono out delay, route it to quad, a quad in, quad out delay, and a complex delay setup. So I'm gonna go over some delay setups that are aimed at creating a delay repeat that would circle the listener. Now, if you just want normal delays, you could set them up just like we've done before, the mono or stereo setups that we talked about previously. So again, you can adapt as needed to do what you want the delays to do. So first thing we're gonna look at is setting up a mono delay, which we will, we will route to the quad. So we are gonna to go to one of the sends, like we always do, and we will say new track from there. In the dialog box, it's all about the input. So even though we're going to the quad, we're gonna create a mono delay, name it F delay, M for mono, and let's see, long, some form of long here. Hit create. So there we go. We have an aux input track. So let's route it. And we are going to go to this S sub M quad. And uh, we'll look at panning that here in a minute. So we'll go ahead and open up the output window so we can do that later. So right next to the output, that little button, we click and we open up the output window, which we will discuss in detail in class. So get the send open here. So we turn up the send and now we go to a delay. We go to plugins and we go to delay and we find mod delay. So this is a mono in and out plugin. So we'll have all of our delay options available to us. So I'm gonna just make a few adjustments here, pick a half note, turn up some feedback, um, solo that up, solo save the track, give it a listen here. So we can't hear it in surround. Basically, I'm playing the delay repeats, and then again, I could automate this pan around um, using automation to make that those that mono delay repeat move around the listener. So that's one option. Again, I could also use it in other ways. This could be a mono pan that I could just automate throughout the mix, and at one point I want a delay to come out the back left, and another time I want it to come out the back right. And so again, I could automate a single delay repeat to just be in a certain place at a certain time and move to a different place at a different time. So looking at another setup, we could go to the send, and we'll go new track, but this time we're gonna go and make a quad aux input track, so we will name it appropriately. So there's my send. Now I have a, a surround panel on my send itself. The delay output, check that. I've got, it's going to the quad. So going to the plugins, if I go to multi-channel, there's not even delay in that list. So the only delay I can load is a multi-mono delay. So I find uh, mod delay three, load that up. So as you might remember from the multi-mono reverb, we end up having four mono versions of this delay when we load up a quad version. Each version only gets signal and therefore produces a delay if it's getting signal via the pan control. So we can option click on the left button there and open up all the different versions. So I like to kind of arrange them like the speakers just so it's not confusing. So we got left, right, right surround and, and uh, left surround. The uh, scenario here is we're having a delay repeat that uh, seems to move around the listener. So basically, if we were going to have a quarter note on the first one, then the second delay would be two quarter notes in value. The third one would be three quarter notes in value, and the fourth one would be quarter, four quarter notes in value. That way, each delay repeat is even. So uh, I'm actually going to choose a half note value here, which was uh, 760. So again, I'll take... Uh, two half notes, or in this case, a whole note at 1520, uh, three half note, um, and I'm just entering the values there, 2280. So 2280 is 1580 plus 760. And then finally, we'll double up that 1520 and get 3040. Okay, so we'll get the send here. We'll turn up the send, and uh, let's check the pan on that. Right now, based on the pan, the only delay unit that's getting any signal would have been the right delay. So we 
perfectly center it. We can uh, put zeros in all the position uh, controls there. And now when we play, all of the delays get some signal. So we can't hear it in surround, but we can see it on the meters on the right, then right surround, then left surround, and then left. So the next thing we're gonna do is set up a complex delay. This is a really flexible delay unit. You can use it in just your stereo mixes by just doing two tracks and ping-ponging uh, left and right. So it's, it's a really cool setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the uh, IO setup and the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have sub paths for all the single channels. Um, so we're going to create four new mono buses, uh, and this will be for left, right, left surround, and right surround, which we uh, don't have because we have center and LFE already. So I'm just going to go through and uh, uh, name them properly. So I'm deleting the numbers. I've typed in S sub M for the name, um, and then it named them S sub M one, two, three, and four. So just have to go in and, and remove the number and put in the speaker. All right, and then I need to uh, assign them to the proper speakers. So I'm going to drag those over. And then I like to have them in order. So I'll drag the center and the LFE. So I'll drag the LFE to the end and the center to be in between. So it's left, center, right. So they're just nice and staircased to there. So we have to create those sub paths. And now we're going to create four mono buses to get signal to the different mono tracks. So I'm going to name it F delay little lowercase m and then um, long in, for a long delay. And then I'll put in left and then they'll all be named incorrectly. And so I'll go back in and, and, and rename those. So, um, so there they are. I'm going to just move them down here. So again, you can see I need to rename all those and I'm going to name them the speakers. So that one is going to be long delay. Um, oops, I forgot to put the number in it. So we'll call that long delay three left. So I'm going to make that correction on all these. So there'll be long delay three right, long delay three left surround, and long delay three right surround. And when I've got all of those, I can hit OK. So I've got the sub pass for each individual speaker, and now I have a bus for the basically the quad speaker set. So left, right, left surround, and right surround. OK, so when we're done, we hit OK. So now what we need to do is create some new tracks. So I'm going to create four mono aux input tracks. Hit OK. So here they are. So let's name them. So I'm going to name them F delay, mono long, three left. So basically the same thing we just did a bit ago. I'm going to copy this first part so I don't have to type it every time. So I'm going to paste and then right surround, or right, paste, left surround, paste, right surround. Okay, so I got them named left, right, left surround, right surround. So I'm going to go assign the inputs. So I'm going to hold down command, option, shift, choose the left version of the bus that we just created. Now I'm going to hold down Option, Shift, and Command, and I'm going to cascade the outputs. So I choose left for the first one. And because center is in the middle there, and we don't need center, I'm going to have to reassign the last three. So they should be matching exactly uh, input, output, and the name should all be set up there. So now I'm going to rearrange the tracks so that they are in the order of how I want the delay repeats to go. So I want right, and then right surround, and then left surround, and then left. So I'm going to put them in that order. So now I'm going to select all the tracks, hold Option and Shift, and Command click on the Solo button to solo isolate those tracks. Then I'm going to come up here and put on a delay. I want a mono delay, so I want mod delay mono. I don't want the mono to stereo. And I choose a half note. 
Okay, no feedback. And now I'm gonna hold Option and I'm gonna just copy that to these four channels. So the next thing we need to do is route the signal that we want to delay to the first repeat track. So since I've already set up the delays and the aux input tracks, what I need to do is create a send to an existing track. So I'm gonna go click on the send slot and go to the track menu and I will find F delay long three right in the list down near the bottom. And I select that and that creates a send. It knows the bus that was used and I turn up that for right now. Um, I'm gonna turn that up and you see that if I hit play, we get a repeat on that channel. So now I wanna take that repeat coming out of that first delay and send it into the next delay unit. Okay, so I'm gonna just do that same exact thing on this track, sending to the next track. So I wanna go to right surround in the list. Okay, so now I turn that one up. And we're gonna talk about this in a minute because we're gonna create a feedback loop here soon. So we need to uh, be careful how much we're sending on. So I'm gonna zero that out for now. Okay, so now on this one, I'm gonna create a send to the next one. So now we have two repeats. So I wanna take this second repeat, send it to, to the third delay, which is left surround. I choose that from the list. And I uh, option click the fader to send it to zero. And now I have three repeats happening. Okay, so we're gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna click on the, choose the left. So we're sending lefts around to left. So what's coming out of that third delay device, we're sending on to the fourth delay device. And now we have four repeats happening. Now, if I wanted to go around the circle again, I can, go back and choose left here. So this sends it back to the first channel. Now here is where I'm creating a feedback loop. So we always wanna make sure we are losing gain or it will just go on forever. So the repeats would never lose any gain. And you see how they're losing some gain here as it rolls around each time it loses a little bit of gain as it goes through the circuit. If I were to set this, um, the last one to zero, it would never lose gain. And so it would just continue um, so we also have to be careful about it gaining um, volume. Um, so we're going to do some things in a minute that could cause it to gain volume. So each one, I just adjusted them so that each one loses a little bit of volume each time. So we can make these delay repeats more interesting and more realistic by uh, adding some EQ. So I'll go ahead and get the seven band EQ. Don't need all those bands right now. And often I'll just use a one band, but uh, we're gonna see some other things here in a minute. So I'm gonna remove some top end. So I'm gonna hold down option and copy that to all of the other ones. And we can see that it loses high frequencies as it repeats. So each time it passes through a delay, it's also getting those high frequencies reduced a little bit more. So another thing that we can do that kind of makes the delays seem a little interesting, for example, would be to remove low frequency. So as it repeats, it's gonna be more mid-rangey and more mid-rangey, less low end, less top end. So it becomes interesting so we'll talk about in class all the other things that you can do to make this kind of interesting, adding on a pitch shifter or losing resolution uh, with lo-fi, other things. So we can do other cool things uh, with this. Okay, thanks for watching.